We are talking about zinc. I love this stuff. I think zinc's my favorite of all the minerals. Non relatively non-toxic, pretty much non-toxic mineral. Very common uh, deficiency. Zinc deficiencies are really common. Zinc's not in the soil. We'll talk about this whole thing with the soils here. Now, soil depletion of minerals probably on our next bright side episode, or maybe today we'll get to it. Zinc is water soluble, or zinc salts are water soluble, so they tend to be leached out uh, very quickly out of the soil, along with selenium. Selenium's the same way, along with sulfur. These, this idea of mineral deficiencies in the soil is so, so significant. You know, you could, we're all freaked out by Ebola. Everybody's talking about Ebola, but nobody's talking about what could be, in my opinion, one of the biggest health crises ever in the history of mankind, of biblical proportions, and that, that is this topsoil issue. The soil is a living organism. The soil is a living organism. This is why when people complain or, or freak out about the minerals in, um, in the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, some of these other mineral products, this is why they miss the boat or why they're, what they're not understanding. The soil is a living organism that can convert minerals and matter into non-toxic nutrients. But the soils have been corrupted and drenched in pesticides and fertilizers and toxins for over a hundred years, at least a hundred years. And this has resulted in dead soil, not to mention the fact that with damming up the rivers, we lose the silt. It's an unbelievable epi epi uh, uh, <laughs> tragedy, health tragedy of epic proportions, of biblical proportions. And we're all freaking out about the silly Ebola stuff. Not that it, Ebola is silly to have it, but uh, the freak out about Ebola is silly. Anyway, we're talking zinc, which, by the way, is very important for building the immune system. Zinc deficiencies are very common. Last uh, Brightside episode, we were talking about zinc in the prostate. Zinc is one of the most, maybe the most important mineral for protecting the prostate. Certain, certainly selenium is also important. If you're using your ProstFX from Longevity, you're going to get zinc in its most premium form, zinc monomethionine. Prostate is very dependent on fats. Vitamin D, vitamin E. I wonder if uh, sometimes I wonder how much of our vitamin, our uh, prostate, so-called prostate problems that everybody seems to have over the age of 40 or 50. All men seem to have over the age of 40 or 50 some degree of BPH or worse. I wonder how much of that is related to nutritional deficiencies or eating the wrong kinds of fats. Vitamin E, vitamin D, getting some sunshine, your ultimate EFAs. These are nutrients that can be very helpful for the prostate. Some folks use saw palmetto. I'm not convinced about saw palmetto yet, but some folks use saw palmetto as an herb for the prostate. Beta cytosterol, one of the all-time great and one of the all-time underappreciated nutrients, very important for the prostate as well. Beta cytosterol or beta cytosterol, some people say. Try, if you're getting up in the middle of the night, if you're a guy and you're getting up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom multiple times, try taking 325 or 350 or 400 milligrams of beta cytosterol and see what happens. Give it a couple of days. Watch what happens. And then take your ProstFX. If you're like most people, between the ProstFX, maybe a little extra zinc, and the beta cytosterol, you're going to notice a dramatic reduction in the, uh, in the amount of times you get up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom. The prostate's a fatty structure, as I say, so fat metabolism is important. Laying off fatty trans fats and hydrogenated fats are very important. Prostate disease is, it really affects everybody, all men over the age of 60. A cancer is a type of prostate cancer. All cancer is a type of growth disease. BPH, benign, prostatic, hypertrophy, hyper meaning lots. Uh, benign, benign hyper, uh, hyperplasia. Is that a benign hyper, hyperplasia? I don't forgot what they say, but anyways, it's a growth issue, and zinc's a growth mineral. The classic sign of zinc deficiency, as we said yesterday, is poor growth. Zinc is a growth hormone, or a growth mineral, I should say. Zinc is also involved in protein metabolism, helps you process protein. And zinc's not just protective against prostate cancer, by the way. It's protective against all cancers. It's a major player in genetics. In fact, your genes contain something called zinc fingers, which are little extensions that contain zinc. And they're involved in how cells divide and how cells reproduce. Not a stretch to say that for all growth issues, for all cell dividing issues, for better or worse, there's going to be some involvement uh, for this mineral, this incredibly important mineral, zinc. 
If you have estrogen dominance, if you have problems with estrogen, and remember, estrogen is a stress hormone, so if you're making lots of estrogen, if your body's under stress, if you're not processing estrogen correctly, the odds are pretty good that you're running into zinc deficiency. Zinc, uh, uh, birth control pills, all estrogen can cause an excretion of zinc, excess excretion of zinc. So if you're on the birth control pill, if you're on hormone replacement therapy, and you're using estrogen, if you're a high estrogen producer, if you have something called PCOS, PCOS is really interesting, a polycystic ovarian syndrome, it's kind of an interesting estrogenic issue, and if you're dealing with PCOS, think zinc, 50 milligrams a day. I'll tell you about, a little bit more about PCOS, finish up on zinc here when we come back from our break, and take your phone calls as well, 855-660-4261 is our number, you're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network, we'll be back right after this. We talked a little bit about androgenic acne, type 1 acne, and a derivative of androgenic acne, PCOS acne, polycystic ovarian syndrome. This is a really terrible, terrible health issue, polycystic ovarian syndrome, because there's lots of cysts in the ovaries. These kinds, these patients, PCOS patients, are making lots of estrogen. Cysts in the ovaries make estrogen. Why do you have cysts in the ovaries? Usually it has to do with insulin and testosterone which means your PCOS patient is gonna have problems with blood sugar, problems with male hormones, excess male hormones, or excess, uh, excess super male hormones, and problems with estrogen. So you got a, a woman who is, um, has all the estrogenic signs, uh, bloating and problems with her period, and cysts and fibroids, sluggishness, headaches, problems sleeping, these are all signs of excess estrogen, zinc deficiencies, and then uh, problems with testosterone, body hair, thinning hair on the head, acne, oily skin. Can you imagine this? Got a, a patient now who's, who's heavy, can't lose weight, has a, a problem sleeping, anxiety, cramping, cysts, fibroids, feels miserable, acne, oily skin, body hair, facial hair, and thinning hair on top of the head. This is a horrible, horrible condition. And one of the easiest ways, in fact, the easiest way to address PCOS is to address blood sugar. In fact, that's the way you address PCOS. PCOS is primarily a blood sugar disease. It's dysglycemia in combination with problems processing hormones. One of the best things you can do if you have PCOS or if you know somebody who has PCOS is get on zinc, 50 milligrams a day. Not only is PCOS induced by zinc deficiency, but it causes zinc deficiency as well. So between excess estrogen causing you to lose zinc and between uh, and not getting enough zinc in the first place or problems with metabolizing sugar burning through your zinc, all you need to do, chances are anyway, to improve the condition is get on 50 milligrams of zinc. You probably need to do more to completely eliminate it, but to improve PCOS, 50 milligrams of zinc is a must. If you have those little white spots in your nails, that could be an indicator of zinc deficiencies. If you have the little white spots in your nails, you're probably deficient in a lot of things. It could be a problem absorbing minerals or it could be a problem in ta taking in minerals. B vitamins also are associated with those little spots in the nails. What does B vitamin deficiencies and zinc deficiencies have in common? Well, aside from the fact that we're not getting them food, aside from the fact that we're not supplementing with them, both of them have in common malabsorption. So if you got those little white spots on your fingers, in addition to getting yourself on 50 milligrams of zinc, making sure you're using your Beyond Tangy Tangerine, which is loaded, loaded with the B complex, you also want to make sure that you're absorbing your nutrients by making sure you're doing all your digestive things, digestive, uh, digestive support, especially apple cider vinegar. Another thing you can do, another, uh, another way you can tell if you have a, a zinc deficiency is do a zinc taste test. Get yourself uh, some zinc solution. Uh, a special taste test solution. It's called zinc sulfate heptahydrate. You can buy it on the internet. And then you do a little taste of it. Don't eat or drink anything for a couple hours before you, before you put it in your mouth. You put some of this solution in your mouth. You swish it around for a few seconds. Spit it out. You can swallow it if you want because you get some zinc that way. And then you see what it tastes like. It should taste really yucky. It should have a very, very stringent, unpleasant taste. If it does, you're okay. If it has just a strong taste, but not, not totally gross, you're probably okay too. However, if you don't taste it, you're probably not okay. If it tastes a little sweet maybe, dry taste, if it, if it doesn't have any taste at all, or tastes like water, chances are you are deficient in zinc. If you suspect zinc deficiency, get some of this solution. Or you know what, just take 50 milligrams of zinc. It's so easy to take. 
50 milligrams of zinc a, a day will cost you a penny. Less than, I don't it's three bucks or four bucks for 90 pills or 100 pills. That's 100 daily doses for three or four bucks. Are you kidding me? That's three cents. Three cents to make sure you get enough zinc. Jeez, it's crazy not to. Now, if you want it, if you don't like supplements, and, and some people don't, I don't, I'm not crazy about the idea of supplementing either. Although, as I said, you gotta supplement because the stuff's not in the soil. But if you insist on not supplementing, or if you just want to bump up your zinc levels and you are supplementing, you can use foods. And there are some good foods that theoretically, I say theoretically, because you never really know what's in your fruits and vegetables and, and meats and dairy and eggs. That's why supplementing is so important. But if you want to get zinc from foods, your high-protein foods are going to be your best sources. Liver is an especially good source. Organ meats in general are good sources. Seafood's a good source. If you're a vegan or a vegetarian, uh, you'll get some in grains. Uh, eggs, by the way, are a great source of, uh, of zinc and all building nutrients. But if you're vegan or vegetarian, you're going to be stuck with grains, which have uh, probably your best vegan vegetarian source of zinc. You've got to eat lots of grains. Wheat bran is especially high. Uh, wheat germ also is high. Um, if you're going to do a veggies, go uh, peas, carrots, beets. Probably cabbage will get you some. For fruits, nuts, by the way, are also a good source. Uh, almonds, peanuts. Peanuts are a good source of zinc. If you're going to go fruits, think dates and, and figs. Of course, then you're going to be dealing with lots of sugar. And there's an, also an important relationship between fructose and zinc. Fructose malabsorption and zinc deficiency also go hand in hand. There's so much stuff here for this incredibly important mineral. There's so much stuff to understand. Soil depletion is probably the biggest, it's probably the biggest reason why zinc deficiency is so common. In fact, soil depletion is, I would have to say, with, uh, with the ex Americans relying on processed, manufactured synthetic foods, that's certainly a problem. But soil depletion may be the most important factor associated with our pathetic health status, the pathetic health status of large numbers of Americans and humanity in general. Yes, processed food is a big problem. But even fresh whole food, because of soil depletion, <sighs> we're, we're, in, we're in a world of hurt, you guys. That's why it's so important to get on a nutritional supplement program. That's why the Beyond Tangy Tangerine and the Healthy Start Pack are not optional if you want to be maximally healthy. All right, we are back on the bright side. I'm pharmacist Ben, 855-660-4261 is our number. We're going to finish up uh, talking about zinc on our next bright side episode and tell you about zinc and prostaglandins. There's a very important relationship between zinc and prostaglandins. We'll talk a little bit about vitamin C and prostaglandins. Vitamin C and uh, essential fatty acids work together to help the body make prostaglandins. We'll talk about that on our next episode. If you've a uh, bright side episode, if you've used uh, my omega-6 healing cream, that's one of the strategies that I employed when I formulated the omega-6 healing cream. I put vitamin C and omega-6s together to help the body make anti-inflammatory prostaglandins, and that's one of the little tricks, one of the little formulating secrets that I like to use when I'm formulating healing products is to blend nutrients together to have an effect, a topical effect on the skin. Prostaglandins are very, very, very important when it comes to skin health and especially relevant when it comes to skin inflammation. We'll talk about all that on our next Bright Side episode. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 855-660-4261 is our number. Let's go to New York and talk to Leslie. What's up, Les? Lee? Susan, hi. I'm calling because I spoke to you two weeks ago about my husband who has a uh, golf though. Okay. Well, he is currently in the hospital now because he ended up with um, pancreatitis and an infection because the stone went into the liver and it was okay. blocking both well, up. He's a mess. He's a mess. So he's got a work, he's got some work to do now. If he's got an emergency condition like this, this is where heroic medicine really really plays an important role. Uh, you know, well, I'm all, I'm 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 no fan of the medical model, as you know, if you've listened to this mm -hmm. program. But there's two kinds of medicine. There's heroic medicine, and then there's ambulatory medicine. Heroic medicine is what your your uh, your husband is luckily getting to uh, enjoy or getting the benefits of, not enjoy, but get the benefits mm -hmm. of uh, here. And this is a, this is where we really want to not throw out the baby with the bathwater in terms of ripping into the medical model. However, he wouldn't be in this mess. 
if he was taking care of himself in the first place. And I don't mean to rip on your husband at all. You know, obviously he's he's you know now's not the time. Now now he needs some TLC. However, it's important for everybody else listening to to know that you don't want to get in this position. Gallstones are a digestive condition and none of the doctor's business unless you're running into infections or like your husband is. Uh, so uh, I could tell you what to do in, in the long run. In the short run, he's going to need the. It's very likely that he's going to need some some medical intervention. Uh, but in the sh- in the long run, it is absolutely vital that he starts to pay attention to the foods he eats and using digestive support. Uh, and I, I probably told you all this before, but number one for gallstones, for chronic gallstones, you've got to connect them to food allergies and food intolerances, problems processing and digesting foods, especially fatty foods. Using uh, nutrients and, su- and supplements that help him digest fatty foods can help too. Um, vitamin, I'm sorry, uh, 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 lecithin, obviously, that's the most important nutrient for helping the body process fat, or supplement, I should say, and that's not a nutrient, but supplement to help the body process fats. Um, bile salts, you can get those in the ultimate enzymes. You should be using them after all meals. Apple cider vinegar also can help. You can get straight bile salts at a health food store. You always want to start off your meals, by the way, with something bitter. Parsley is great. Uh, anything bitter will stimulate bile. You can use something called Swedish bitters. Start your meals off with Swedish bitters. Start your meals off with dandelion greens or some kind of bitter greens. All of those will stimulate bile, make it easier for you to digest your food. Uh, taurine, T-A-U-R-I-N-E, is an amino acid that's important for the manufacturing of bile. Same with an amino acid called glycine. You can also use a supplement called choline. Uh, now, if he's, did you say he had pancreatitis too? Yeah, and they're really um, pushing for him to have the gallbladder removed before. Well, you know, they're pushing, but he's the guy who has to live with it. You know, I love that. They're pushing to have his gallbladder removed, right? Your husband is going to be living with them pushing with the, with the, with their, their, what they're pushing, the surgical procedure that they're encouraging him to have. Your husband is the guy living with this for the rest of his life. The The doctors will be fine. What's because that? he has sickle, the fear is because he has sickle cell. They're saying that that is what's causing him to make these gallstones. No, no it's and, not. Yeah. No, it's not. That's silly. Sickle cell is definitely a, co- a contributing factor to his ill, to his ill health, to his poor health. Mm-hmm. But it's not the gall. You know, it's the gallstones are digestive, not the sickle cell. Mm-hmm. Now, sickle cell. You didn't tell me had sickle cell, but that's a, something else that needs to be addressed. Zinc is one of the best ways, by the way, to deal with sickle cell anemia. Uh, fifty mil- If he's not taking fifty milligrams a day of zinc, he better be. He should be. Um, okay. Also, the entire B complex. Is he on the Beyond Tangy Tangerine? Yes. Okay. Ha- have him take sip on it all day long. The B complex is very important for sickle cell as well. Treat sickle cell anemia, which, by the way, is called thalassemia when it occur- occurs in white people, and sickle cell anemia when it occurs in black people. Same idea. You're not making healthy mm-hmm. blood cells. Don't pay any attention to that nonsense about genetics either. By the way, sickle cell mm-hmm. anemia is a blood issue where the body's not making cells correctly, specifically red blood cells, and they form a sickle sickle shape. Treat it as a sign of bodily dysfunction, not a genetic curse. There are perhaps predispositions to it, but if it was a genetic disease, you wouldn't have it in white people and black people uh, and have, have the same kind of illness in, in two different races. The same exact problem. It's, it's a problem making cells is what the, the issue is with sickle cell anemia. Uh, and making uh, red blood cells is what you want to is how you want to focus on dealing with it. Now that is a contributing factor in breaking the body down. It may not be a it may not be a cause of gallstones, but it is a contributing factor in overall breakdown of the body. Red blood cells are important for oxygen. No oxygen, the body breaks down, and gallstones ultimately can be the result. So you got to focus on building blood and staying away from problem foods. It's not that complicated for anybody to deal with these things. Stay away from problem food. Focus on the digestive system. Make sure you're using your Mighty 90 Essential Nutrients. Now, if he wants to do other things, taking care of his blood, blood sugar is also probably important. And then um, using oxygen techniques, deep breathing always goes a long way to, for any health issue. But specifically, work on the digestive system. Work on uh, helping him, him make blood cells with, the zinc, with zinc and the B-complex. Uh, protein is also important. Vitamin C is also important. All of these nutrients are going to are going to play an important role in keeping them healthy. Thanks for your call, Leslie. Anything else going on? Um, just that. How can I dissolve the stones? You, you're not going to dissolve if it's past. You you got to deal with the doctors at this point. In my opinion, uh, at this point, mm-hmm. what you want to do is prevent further stones by staying off of problem foods, uh. focusing on the digestive system, processing fats, especially ultimate enzymes, apple cider vinegar, lecithin, choline, taurine, all the things we just talked about. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. And don't forget the apple cider vinegar is especially important. 
Thanks for your call, okay. Leslie. Hope you appreciate. Thank you. I hope you helped you out. Um, you know, that's the thing, you guys. Once it gets tumbles out of control, and you have to interact with the medical model, you got to interact with the medical model. That's the price you got to pay. But uh, that doesn't mean that you don't want to start using supplements and start taking care of your digestive issues for future problems, for the future problems. Okay, if you have a problem now, you need medical intervention. Go do what you need to do. Don't let them yank out an organ, though, unless you have cancer. All right, Justine yeah. in Georgia, what's up? Uh, yeah. Hey, hey, how's it going? What's going on? How can uh, we help you? It's going well. Thank you for letting me, you know, be on a call. I appreciate that. Sure, sure. What's up? Okay, I am from Brazil, and uh, I do use also the longevity supplement. Are you calling and from that, Brazil? You're not calling from uh, Brazil. So, no, no, I'm not. The call is not from Brazil. It's from Atlanta. But longevity is going to Brazil for my mother. Very nice. Yes, my mother's 96 years old, but she doesn't have no issue. And nice. So I just keep her, and I, uh, I give it to her longevity. Well, last, last two weeks, she went to for her, you know, doctor, you know, physical, you know, to see if everything is okay. Yes. So when she went to a doctor, a lady doctor, for to see if her, do, uh, her he heart... He told her to stop taking all her supplements, probably, right? She did. She said I knew it. Okay. Do, you know what a cagada is? You ever hear this? Cagada? That's a bonehead in Portuguese. Dr. Bonehead. Hang on, uh, Justina. We'll finish up when we come back from our break. Hey, if you're on speaker, Justina, come off the speakerphone because it's hard to hear you. All right. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. 855-660-4261 is our number. We'll be back right after this. All right, we are back on the bright side talking to Justina in Atlanta. Hello, Justina. So you're. Uh, yes. You know what a cagada is? You ever hear that term? Uh, what is it? Cagada. It's a Portuguese word. It means bonehead. Doctor Cagada, He's telling your uh, mother, telling your, telling your mother not to use supplements. She's ninety six. Is she sick? Is there anything wrong with her? No, nothing no. wrong. And she said that if she continues taking longevity, the estrogen and mineral, she's going to have a stroke. That's okay, good. Well, I don't know what to tell you. You know, I hear stupid things all the time from physicians, and I don't know how to answer them. They're just dumb. So, yeah. uh, you know, what can I say? If she's going to, chances are though, she's ninety-six. She's she's under the spell of the medical model. That's how older folks are usually unfortunately, because, you know, they were raised in the 40s and 50s when, when medicine was in its, when modern medicine was in its heyday. Um, I don't know what to tell you. She's got to do what she, she's got to take, take the ball into her own court and do what she, I would personally not be paying attention to my doctor, but, you know, what can you do? I told, I told my sister, I said, don't stop the, giving to her the minerals and the, don't stop, don't listen. Take her to a nutritionist and then listen to the opinion yes, of a, yes. a heart doctor. That's I great advice. Nothing about that. That's great advice, but you can only do what you can do. How else can I help you, ma'am? I want to get to some more, more calls, Justine. Anything else going on? Uh, no, no. Thank you so much. I God bless you. I was right. Thank okay, you, and God, God bless, God bless you. you as well. God bless you. Have a beautiful day. Thank you so much for your call. Isaac in New York. What's up, bro? Welcome to the Bright Side. I think I talked to you a couple days ago, Isaac. Yeah, Laughter. You talked, me, you talked to me yesterday, but um, I wanted to get a question before I actually I accidentally hung up. My ears, my ear pressed the uh, hung up okay. by mistake. Sorry about okay. that. Okay. Well, no worries. What's going on? Yeah, yesterday I, I told you I had liquid bowel movements for years, and you told me food in response. It may be malabsorption. Uh, malabsorption. Yes. A link to food. Yes. It's uh, either food. It's either it's either your body trying to evacuate some kind of food or some kind of toxin that it interprets as a toxin, or it could be malabsorption of minerals. Uh, that'll do it too. What else, What were you going to say? Uh, I want to say um, I, I've changed my diet like over a period of time to test out the food. Like I haven't stayed with one particular food. I've changed my diet, and you I, can't figure it out. Is what you're saying? Yeah. yeah. Uh, here's what you do. Stop eating for two days or three days. Stop eating as long as you can. Two or three days would be great if you can do that. Use the swear of V. Uh, if you want to, why don't you order the swear of V off of, um, I'll go to brightsideven.com, pull down on the shopping cart, order the swear of V. If you can do the gold, that's the best. And when it comes in, do a three-day fast or a two-day fast. Only do swear of V and watch what happens. Chances are your liquid bowel movements should subside. If they don't subside, then don't even do the swear of V. But chances are they should subside. Then reintroduce foods. This is how you do an elimination diet. 
uh, for an emergency condition, which it sounds like you're dealing with, and I would interpret this as an emergency if it's been this long. So uh, stop eating, then reintroduce foods after a couple of days, and start with your favorite foods, and watch what happens, and try to eat just one kind of food all day. All right, so if you love cheese, just eat cheese all day. That tends to be constipating, so that's probably not going to be it. But whatever it is, eat just one kind of food all day long and see what happens. If you're fine with that food, then uh, you can cross that off the list and go to the next food. You follow me? Does that make sense, Isaac? Chances yeah. are, though, you're going to find what you're eating a lot of is the problem. But it, is, it could be a malabsorption issue also. If that's the case, if it's not a food allergy or food intoxin, it's just malabsorption, then you're going to want to start working with absorption strategies. Chief among them is apple cider vinegar and digestive enzymes and the biolumin nightly essence. So if you don't want to go with the, do, do the first thing that I just talked about where you stop eating and then introduce foods, get yourself on the biolumin nightly essence right away. And that might make a difference as well. Sometimes uh, if you don't have the right pr proportions or amount of bacteria in your gut, that can cause diarrhea too. Your stools are made up of, uh, of bacteria. So if you don't have enough bacteria or something's wrong with the bacteria, that can affect the stools also. So you got to make sure you have your microbiome, your bacteria, gut flora are operating correctly and there's the right amount and right proportions. Bioluminitely essence will help there too. Same with fermented cabbage or fermented beets or fermented foods in general. So if you don't want to do the elimination or the, the fasting and then reintroducing foods, try uh, bioluminitely essence and uh, apple cider vinegar and all the absorption strategies that we talk about. Okay, it could be a liver issue, you're not making enough bile. There's no way to know until you start to do some experimenting. Before I went to do all that, I remember yesterday you also said to try soluble fiber. Yes. I tried soluble fiber long enough, so maybe... That might I help, that's but that's idea. more... That might help, but that's not, that's not going to cure the problem. That might take care of the symptom, but the problem is still there. It sounds like a malabsorption issue. Soluble fiber may help a little bit, um, but you might want to do the other things we talked about earlier. And you can buy soluble fiber anywhere. Uh, you can, eat, you can eat, get it in vegetables, but you can also buy uh, soluble fiber at a health food store and just put it into water and drink it, and that might be something that you want to consider doing too. Okay, Isaac? Okay, just one more question. Sure. I mean, um, sure. Uh, Lately, for a long time, like, I feel tired, like, chronic. It's all part of it. You're not absorbing, dude. You're not absorbing nutrients. You're starving to death, Isaac. I, I don't know how much more clear I could be or firm I could be. Do you understand the significance of this? You are starving to death. You're getting calories, perhaps, but you're not getting nutrients. When you have loose bowel movements for 20 years, that means nutrients are being flushed out of your body. You're, so you're starving. Of course you're going to be tired, and it's going to get worse. You sound like a young guy, but you know what, dude? It's going to get worse. And you're running higher risk for all kinds of hideous things. You follow me, Isaac? Are you there? Uh, yeah, yeah, I hear you. So that's what it is. So you're not going to, you know, I can't, you can't treat the tiredness or the symptoms without treating the digestive system first. You're not getting nutrients. That means you're literally starving. Okay. You see how important this is? Yes, um, I'll, I'll follow your advice and, and see what happens. It's very important. This is not anything to be toyed around with. You sound like a young guy, but it's going to get worse. All right, would you stay in touch with me? You can either email me or call us on the radio program. I'd love to hear how you're doing. Yeah, I'll follow up with you afterwards when I um, get this down. Thank down. you. Yeah, stay in touch. Stay in touch. You can always send me emails at ben at ksco.com. Put Isaac from New York in the subject heading. God bless you, bro. Thank you so much. Thank right, you thank for your you. call. All right, uh, let's see. Diane in Texas, what's going on? How you doing? Hello? Hello, Diane. Oh, hi. I couldn't hear you. It was cut out. Thank you for taking my call. Sure. I have a 15-year-old daughter who was diagnosed with hypothyroidism at four. Okay. She. Um, That's significant. That's very, very is. significant. She, hypothyroidism is a sign of a body in distress. Nothing more, nothing less. Okay? Don't, it's not, a, it had not an iodine deficiency, although that can contribute. It's not some weirdness about the thyroid, you know, some weird genetic malady. It's a sign of a body in distress. Chances are it involves the digestive system. Chances are pretty good. Did she have food allergies or food intolerances as a baby? She had every food intolerance. I didn't even feed okay. her solid food till she was one. Do you think I just rolled off the turnip truck and got on a radio show and started talking about this stuff? I've been seeing it for decades. And your boneheaded doctors should be addressing the digestive system, not diagnosing her with hypothyroidism. Hypothyroidism is nothing more than the manifestation of a stressed out biological system. That's what it is. It can involve autoimmunity, it can involve digestive problems, but it's the sign of a body 
in distress. Now, Diane, when your baby was crying, right, when she was an infant, when she was crying, what did you do? You went and you nurtured her. You loved her. You pet her. You find out what was wrong with her. Well, guess what? Our bodies and your, your, baby, your, your 15-year-old's body is her baby. It's like a baby. So what do you do when your baby's crying, when your baby's in distress, when your baby is, is suffering something somehow? You calm the baby down. You look for what's causing the problem with the baby. You follow me? Right. So something is causing your body, your your little girl's, or your your teenage girl's body to cry out. It's hypothyroidism is like your body going, "Help me, help me, please." And so what do we do? We say, "Shut up! I don't want to hear from you." That's what a prescription drug is. Or even worse, we're just going to cut your tongue out, baby. That's called removing the thyroid or radiating the thyroid, which you know they're not going to do it for your, for uh, for di for your kid because it's hypothyroidism. But chances are they're going to give her a uh, synthroid, or if they're not already giving her synthroid, right? Oh yeah. Okay, yeah. of course. You know, that's just more nonsense. Diane, this is so important because after hypothyroidism follows every single horrible thing that can happen to a human being. Do you, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, after hypothyroidism. All right. After hypothyroidism follows, and I don't mean to, to be negative here, but you need to hear this. After hypothyroidism follows lupus, follows autoimmune diseases of all kind, follows cancer. Uh, uh, after hypothyroidism, you get heart disease, you get cancer, you get uh, everything horrible about being alive follows hypothyroidism. And so what do you do? You, re you reduce the stress, the strain, the duress on the body. Start with deep breathing. Have her sit on the couch and practice deep breathing. Stat. That's pharmacy talk for immediately, right away. Do it today. Secondly, stabilize the blood sugar. Uh, it's very important. Get on the sweeties. Stop eating the foods that spike the blood sugar. Make sure she's on the Mighty 90 Essential Nutrients. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely focus on digestive health. Use the BioLumin Nightly Essence. Eliminate problem foods. She's probably got a, a long-standing digestive issue that has not been corrected. Diane, i got to move, but if you want to contact me, send me an email, ben at ksco.com. Put your phone number in there, and I'll, I'll help you out personally. Okay, thanks for your call. Appreciate it. I'm sorry if we left you on hold. I tried to get to everybody today. Uh, that's why we got to get you on as early as possible when you call in on the bright side. All right, hope to see you in Olean, New York, Tuesday, the 21st of October. We'll continue talking about zinc and prostaglandins and zinc deficiencies, and, uh, and, and then we'll get into some vitamin C stuff on our next bright side episode. Thanks for listening, folks. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have a spectacular, wonderful day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.